everybody, and welcome to Good Luck High Five, episode 500. What? That's not right. Yes, it is. <laughs> 585. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering. No matter how you enjoy it, we are here for you. I'm one of your hosts who definitely knows what episode number this is, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts who just always relies on Maria to know what episode (laughs) number it is. Megan. Would you even bat an eye if I next episode said 723? Oh, yes. I mean, I know it's I know <laughs> the ballpark. I'm not over here just being an absolute room. Mm, we'll see. I might slip it in there in the future. <laughs> Will you catch it? We'll find out. Uh, this week, um, we're not talking about the X-Files. <laughs> no. Why uh, would we? We're a podcast but, about Magic I know. the Gathering. We would never do an entire episode about that because we are a magic podcast. That's correct. Just wanted to let you all know. It's a very special week as well because Judge Rob is going to be joining us to get you ready for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction pre-release. Yep. It's one of the favorite episodes of our listeners every time it comes around because Judge Rob is a true font of knowledge. Oh, yes. You no, uh, put a dolphin statue on him. He's a fountain. He's ready to go. He's ready <laughs> to go. Water out of instead mouth. of water, it's going to be magic facts. Knowledge, about knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Lots of Thunder Junction. <laughs> we'll give you the, the heads up on how all of the mechanics work and any tricky card interactions there might be. And we'll let you know exactly what's going to be in a booster pack when you open it. Oh. This is critical information uh, because... It's it's wild out there it inside an outlaws pack. Let me tell you, it's, one of those play boosters. You know, it's out, you know. It's outlawed, out outlandish. Uh, it's yes, outlandish. Thank you. That's what I was going. We got for the here. big score in there. We got special guests. We'll tell you what you can and can't play wow. in your drafts and what to look for when you open those play boosters, which are fairly new. They crammed a lot of stuff into this set. Yeah, they really did. And we're gonna let you uh, know what's up, so you can head into your pre-release at your local game store. Feeling confident. Let me ask you this question, though, before we start. Okay. Would you install a font of knowledge at your manor house? Wow. Is it going to be... Do other people know about it? And is it like an attraction that other people are going to want to come to? You can tell whoever you want or not tell whoever you want about this fountain that spurts knowledge. No. I just want to know what this reservation I you have, have is. I have a font of knowledge. It's called my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's called the, it's internet. Called the internet. <laughs> and I don't want random knowledge being spurted out at any I'm, moment. Exactly. I'm worried that the fountain's <laughs> going to give me knowledge that I don't want at the time. Ooh. It's going to be like, just so you know. And I'd be like, no, thank you. I don't want that fact. Oh, did you know that oh, Linear no. B is a syllabic script that was used for writing Mycenaean Greek, the earliest attested form of Greek? All right. That's a, that's one that I'll take. I like that one. See, that's what you can expect here on the uh, in the font of knowledge. I'm just saying, Maria, there's some font knowledge that you're not going to be happy about. Did you know the alimentary canal is a long tube through which food is taken into the body and digested? I didn't want to know In human one. beings, this passage is about 30 feet long. I didn't <laughs> want to see. There we go. Got there already. <laughs> the second knowledge was already too much. The second knowledge was already a knowledge I did not want. You got a lot of feet of tubes inside you. Would you put a font of knowledge in your house? Gosh. I mean, it's got to always be on because if yes. it's not on, what am I even you're doing. wasting your time. I'm wasting the knowledge. The yeah, knowledge you're resource. The knowledge. <laughs> it's not a renewable resource. No. Um. Yeah. It's too risky. There's going to be some facts in there that That's are going to be saying. inappropriate at the time they're spouted. Yes. Can you, you imagine? Know? Like you're you. Invite people over garden for party. a nice garden party, and then your font of knowledge is telling people about the human digestive tract, <laughs> and the next thing you know, no one is eating your fancy garden hors d'oeuvres. Oh, I tried cucumber sandwiches for the first time recently. Oh, they're so good. Love them. You wouldn't think that something Underrated. called like a cucumber sandwich would be good, because you're like, what is, <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Is it just cucumber? But the Between two is, breads. <laughs> between two breads. The answer is no. It's like lovely, like cream cheese and cucumber yeah and they cut off the little crusts for you it's delightful it's really delightful truly i mean yeah that's a garden party i would go to font yeah. of knowledge i don't know no i don't think i would exactly. do it exactly well we get to the pit of the hard questions here yes, on good luck really high do. five <laughs> but before we get to the pit of outlaws of thunder junction uh oh the the oh the the, the the guy who's panning for gold in the desert almost came out of my mouth just there <laughs> He almost escaped. If he would then evacuate the premises, he's welcome to. But if he's just going to stick around, he cannot. Uh, we want to thank 
you everybody who makes the show happen every single week by being a patron over at patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Yes. Thank you so much to everyone who is a patron who literally makes this show and everything else that we do possible. Yes. If you've been enjoying uh, Commander Arcade, you make that also literally you, you make that you make possible. it happen. We would not be able to do that without your support. Absolutely so thank not. you so very much. We don't have any new patrons, but we are recording this episode early. Yes, we are. So uh, perhaps that is it. And if you, you know, if you become a patron in the next couple of days and you're like, why am I not on this episode? Don't worry. You'll be on the next one. You'll get your pun. Hey, why are we recording it early, Megan? Are you going, going to go <gasps> do something cool? I'm going to go to New Hampshire for the eclipse. What? I'm so excited. You're going to see that sun moon combo. Exactly. <laughs> when they um, stack when Oreo they style. Stack, yes. When the sun and moon Oreo. Make the Oreo Oreo in the sky. Is Oreo doing a promotional (laughs) eclipse Oreo? Because if they're freaking not. It looks like an eclipse. It really does. It's the most eclipse looking food there is. Oreos, the food of the eclipse. (laughs) You're welcome, Oreo. You're freaking welcome. They're not even giving us money for this. Call us. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be very cool. Do you have your yeah. little gl- your little goggles? Yes, a friend is bringing <gasps> all of the glasses, which I'm very thankful for because I just know. Otherwise, I'm the kind of, like, my brain would just be too curious, you would just you know? Look. You just get, I would you're just, told I not would to look. look. Exactly. Don't I know look at the I would. eclipse, kids. Don't look at the eclipse. This is just a reminder. <laughs> this is not a medical like podcast. So, Don't do it. <laughs> but so I, yes, I'm very thankful. Um, I'm very excited. I also just really like New Hampshire, so I'm going to see some friends out on the East Coast. I'm very excited for the trip in general. So. It's supposed to be cloudy here when it happens, oh. but maybe we'll get lucky in Minnesota and we'll get yeah. we're a seventy five percent eclipse uh, area. Yeah, maybe I'll be able to take a picture because that's kind of what I want to do. It'd be pretty cool, but we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, we'll be back um, with people who subscribed next week and let you know what's up. Um, speaking of Commander Arcade, we got a new episode of Commander Arcade that just dropped this week. We sure do. Uh, it's Featuring some of the murders at Karlov Manor commanders. Yes. Not the pre-condex. We asked our influencers, speaking of Patreon. Yes. We asked our influencers uh, what commanders they most wanted to see built from the cards in the main set. And so we've got Atrada. Uh, we've got Alquist Prof. We've got Tesa, of course. And we've got... Uh, four- Voha. Oh, who? Voha. Oh, that's right. Oh, God. The yep. what the discourse card? Uh, yes, Vo- Voha discourse of the conclave. <laughs> <laughs> that is Voha, the true name. Jaws of the discourse. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Rob loves Voha and played uh, Voha in this episode. Yeah. Um, the love really comes through. You can tell it's a very fun it's episode. Very cool. Go check it out. The decks are really interesting. Um, and yeah, we built them all from scratch. Which uh, thanks to our influencers, they helped us out. By the way, if you're an influencer, your name gets put into a drawing to get uh, a chance to win the token. Tokens that we draw. That's right. This is new, this Commander Arcade. Yes. So we've got our very cute tokens. You'll watch the Commander Arcade and you'll be like, I love those tokens. Here's a little preview Spoiler, of one. Spoiler, here's one. How do I get it? The answer is if you're an influencer, you've got a chance. Or a producer. Producers, or a pro- you're right. in this pool too. Or if you're a secret member of our uh, <laughs> Desolation Twin level. Oh, which that's you right. Call, you're also a in. secret level. You're also in for this drawing. So get yourself in these drawings. We're going to do them every month, once yeah. a month, for the tokens that we draw that month on Commander Arcade. Uh, and they're very, very cute and very, very bad. And wouldn't that be a fun addition to your life? <laughs> the answer is, of course. <laughs> Before we kick off the show, big thanks to Card Kingdom. You can check them out at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Pre-order yourself a box of uh, Outlaws at Thunder Junction today. Yeah. Perhaps some of those Commander decks, if you don't want to build your own, they, you know. Perhaps they shortcut. call to you. They've, I mean, that that gold maker calls to me. Yeah. I thought that guy looks really good. I'm very excited. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're having a Commander Boxing League. Yes. Uh, Commander Arcade. And I ordered a box. <gasps> you know, it's not always possible to get a box. Like, local game stores... L- don't always have like great sure, yeah. like stock of old boxes, but I was able to like very easily get my chosen my chosen <gasps> box. I'm not you're gonna have to wait. It's oh, a surprise. What is it? Uh, from Card Kingdom. So thanks to them. Yeah, go check them out. They've got everything you need for your magical life at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Everybody, welcome Judge Rob to the show. Hi, Judge Rob. How are you doing? Pretty good. It's been a good week. Um, Excellent. Great. Went to the the last th- time that we really spent a bunch of time together was, I mean, we recorded some Commander Arcade, but yes. like we're at the Pro Tour. That yeah. was pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. 
You the Pro Tour is pretty great. The Pro Tour is pretty great. It's my first one since Atlanta. That was years oh, ago. Wow. wow. It was a good pro tour. You are it correct. Was. And now we've got a good pre-release coming up this weekend. Uh, we're excited to attend the, Lo the Lodestone pre-release here in the Minneapolis area. Yeah. If anybody wants to come out and play against us, that's where we'll be yeah. representing the show and Commander Arcade, which yep. is going to be very, very fun. Um, but before we dive into this, because there is a lot to get through, uh, you like to start with a PSA. I do. And this is related to a comment that Megan made in the Discord, which is, if you're feeling unhappy about the state of the world or your life or just anything, join a local aid group. Do something to make people better. Just do something. Join something. Get involved with something that builds something. Whether it be like a local chamber of commerce, a local aid group, a, a food kitchen, a, you know, if you get involved with magic kids and teach kids how to play magic so they can be better at school. Uh, building, building something and improving people's lives, like being part of a nonprofit, being part of some organization that just makes the world better. You'll be like, oh, that's work. I have to drag myself out of bed at 7 a.m. in order to, you know, mow people's uh, underprivileged people's lawns. You know what? That makes their lives better. And you'll feel so much better you once will. you actually do it. I think it's like the yeah. number one thing people say will help you feel better yeah. about life in general is volunteering. Yeah. It's, it, it, and seeing, uh, seeing like, you'll be like, well, like, you know, mowing these people's lawns doesn't, you know, change the state of the two wars that are going on in the world. You probably couldn't change a lot about their state anyways, but you could you could make somebody's day better by delivering their groceries. You know, it's it, you, yeah. you can have this impact and it's a real tangible thing that makes people's lives better. And I'm picking entirely arbitrary things. Everybody has different communities and different passions and skills. And you can find a way to get involved and just make things better. This is yeah. an actual PSA PSA. Yeah, it's an actual yeah. PSA PSA. <laughs> I will say it particularly if you are like just dis distressed um, about the like targeting of different minority groups in any sort of way. There are and you're like, I can't do anything about this on a national level or an international level. There are there like right. There are people in your community that need that help. And like you are responsible for taking care of them is my opinion is that we are responsible for caring yeah. for each other. So, you know, we take care of us. Yeah. And you're probably not more than a couple social connections away from somebody who's connected with this. Yeah. Like I would go to my board game group and I'd contact my friend who's on the DNC in the area. And he'd, I'd be like, is there stuff that I can do to, to help with, with organizing to push for underprivileged people's political representation better. Uh, Cause he's a black guy and he's great and he's really involved. And he'd be like, yeah, I've got this whole list of stuff do these things, you know, get out there. Yeah. Great PSA, Rob. Thank you for bringing it up. Um, we're going to turn our attention now to the, to the set. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> I was, you know, kind of joking at the top. I'm like, Whoa, this set. Whoa, Nelly. Uh, but for real, there is a lot yeah. going on here. So let's just break it down with what is actually in this set. Cause it is kind of confusing. It, so there are, Two types of booster packs. We've we've trimmed down the three booster SKUs to two, except that there's still three because there's the special booster pack and pre-release kits. But we're gonna <laughs> pretend that's a collector's booster. By RIP draft boosters. <laughs> yep. We uh, barely draft, knew ye. We no, we really knew them. They're, like <laughs> this is they, they lived. A, they, they lived, lived a, long, a full life. They, li they lived a full life. <laughs> I am, goodbye set boosters. We barely yeah, knew. Goodbye yeah, goodbye set boosters. Yeah, that, that yes. is true. That's true. Yeah. And so we now have play boosters yep. and play boosters can contain four different set codes in them now, uh, which ha each have distinct set symbols. Uh, there is the OTJ set code, which is Outlaws of Thunder Junction. That's the normal set. There is OTP, the breaking news. Uh, that is the ones that, that have the alternate frame that looks like a newspaper. Yeah. There is BIG. They were originally going to have like an aftermath style set, like big score. And so they've taken that whole big score set, or maybe only some of it, it's unclear. 30 cards of that set have been moved into slots in in play boosters. And these are all mythics. Yep. They're they're all mythics, so the, and they cover a wide range of very random stuff. They have extra mechanics on them, characters from outside that like why are they on this plane? Who knows? Why is Marchisa here? She's a queen, right? Yeah. Like from conspiracy? Why, why is she why is Olivia here? <laughs> Like, Why not, Rob? Uh, uh, she heard this is the best gas station in the plains. Well, but yeah, but the problem is that you don't <laughs> like King Charles yeah. didn't come to the United States to open up the frontier. He consolidated <laughs> political power at home. 
<laughs> wow. Well, you know, his example is not what I would choose to live my life by. <laughs> uh, sure. Absolutely. But like, like there's all sorts of random people in that list. Um, yeah, that's the, fair. Uh, then there is a SPG, the 10 special guest cards. So in previous sets, they had list cards. They called the, the combination of BAG and SPG the list in this set. Uh, they they are labeled SPG. They have their own little star expansion symbol. It's distinct. There's 10 of those that are in the set as well. Um, in addition, uh, collector's boosters will have OTC cards, Outlaws of Thunder Commander. Mm-hmm. And so those are the cards that are unique to the Commander set that are that are being packaged into those as well. So there are five potential set Ooh. codes that you might have show up. Five different set symbols. Yes. Uh, I think the most important thing to know, though, is if you're drafting with one of these play boosters, what can you play in draft? If you open it in a play booster, you can play it. There you go. That's All if right. you open it in your Simple. pool. And also at the pre-release, there's no special, though these aren't part of your pool cards this Thank time. Thank God. So Hallelujah. Maria cannot, I can't, <laughs> yes. I Maria can't cannot build a, a, an illegal deck again. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah. And so there's, there's none of that. It's just, if you open it, you can play it for this. Um, standard legality is determined by an algebra formula, as far as I can tell. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> OTC is not standard legal, uh, neither are the special guests, but um, big score is, and so is Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Um, and uh, the newspaper cards, the breaking news cards also, they're just like cards oh, in the commander legal? set. As they yep. were legal yes. before. Yep, they're legal as they're legal before. They didn't add legality based on breaking news. So uh, I want to jump into returning mechanics, and I might kill this segment going forward, because honestly... Sets have so many returning mechanics now. That's true. And it's all, they yeah, slap, they do. Yeah. Slap them on anybody these days. Yeah, there's two cards that give flashback to things. There's a artifact that has hideaway. Uh, there's a thing that investigates. Uh, there's one thing that randomly makes blood tokens. There's Oof, a card with duh. landfall. Like, there's all these little random returning mechanics. And for the most part, they're reminder texted. Um, I didn't check all the alternate frames to see if you don't get reminder text for like for like flashback, um, the hideaway artifact. I don't think it's space for hideaway. So sure. I guess so you might not have on a special yeah. printing, but uh, no, no, no. Just I think that's in the base printing. Oh, it that is. Was in okay. the, that was in the big score print stuff. So uh, just be aware you're going to see a bunch of these. The one returning mechanic that shows up at a high frequency is deserts, which are back, and I'm very excited for. I like to pan for gold in the desert, personally. Nope, there it's isn't not. any there. <laughs> well, well you, know, you don't know till you try. That's what I say. There, I mean, there were plenty of gold mines in deserts, right? Oh, well, maybe I'll stumble oh. upon one of those. <laughs> I live in your brain. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> if you live in my brain, does that mean I secretly want to go pan the desert for gold? Well, maybe you do somewhere deep, deep inside. That, that means that there's a clear way to get rid of her, though. Find a nugget. Take it home. A lobotomy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just right through the intracranial, <laughs> like right through your eye. Oh right with, boy, with go on, pick. try and kill me, kill me with a pick. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to go for a prospector with no! a pickaxe, you know what I'm saying? Uh, sorry, Rob, <laughs> so, deserts. deserts. Um, so desert is a land type that has no mechanical identity on its own. It's just like a creature type like Goblin. Other things care about it. So like Arid Archway is a, is a land, it's a desert. It enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. If another desert was returned this way, surveil one. And then taps to add two colorless mana, which is, this is just concealed courtyard from one of the commander sets, except better. So it's going to replace a bunch of those in my decks or be a second copy. Sure. Um, but cards it, cards care about deserts like that one does. Or there's a lot of like creatures like um, Cactarantula here. Oh, which yeah. Is a, which is a green, green four for a six, five. It's a plant spider. It says this costs one less to cast if you control a desert. Love it. And so you can p- play it for five. Uh, that's not a terribly huge discount, but uh, honestly, I'll pay that. Yeah. It has reach. And when it becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Pretty nice. Yeah, pretty Good nice card. common. Common, yep. yeah. And so there's a bunch of cards that care mechanically about deserts in the set. There's a cycle of deserts that do crimes to your opponent. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit here. Uh, have you ever had a desert commit a crime on you? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> Every morning when I wake up and oh, I add no. sand all up in my crusties, that's a the, crime. I'm... <laughs> 
So Rob, new mechanics. So new mechanics. Uh, like Maria, they, we have outlaws. Um, so so looking at something like Hellspur Brute, Hellspur Brute here. It's red and four for a five four creature Minotaur mercenary. It has affinity for outlaws. The spell costs one mana less for, to cast for each assassin, mercenary, pirate, pirate, rogue, and or warlock you control. And then it has trample. So outlaws are those the, that list of creature types. Assassins, they kill people and it's illegal. Mercenary, getting paid to do war probably should be illegal. Pirates, they yes. steal. Yep. They uh, piracy. Yeah. Rogues are like what does pirates a rogue with worse do? PR. Like, <laughs> They, I love that. They, they live in cities and they steal. Okay. Oh, but They're, I'm working on being a pirate. Yeah. Land I just need pirates. My, yeah. I need to get my media team on it. Yep. And then warlocks. Warlocks. For some reason. Warlocks are illegal. Uh, and so. What is a warlock anyway? I feel like this war, is. Like, so traditionally they're male wizards. Oh. Or not, wait, sorry, male witches, but that's not really how magic treats them. I just Google it. What is the real definition of a warlock? That's what comes up. I feel like a warlock in magic's universe is like bad, ma like yeah. mean magic. Yeah, they're yeah. evil shamans. Is evil your wizards. magic yeah. mean? Yeah. You a warlock. You're a warlock. Yeah. You might be a warlock. Uh, they, they folded witches into warlocks, basically. Yeah. So they, this list... Uh, this is new tech. They've decided to make a sublist of creatures and keyword it on one word and then waste a bunch of space on a lot of cards that get reminder text because then yeah, it, they have to, to spell remember, it out in yeah. reminder text. But um, this lets them save a bunch of space on other things like rares. It lets them say cool phrases. Um, Affinity for Outlaws is just a cool phrase. It's very cool. Yeah. Uh, and so like getting to say phrases like that on cards has some has some definite, definite value in terms of keywording things. There are outlaws there. Oh, I'll be there. Yeah. And so the... Every it's just a it's just an umbrella term. There is no outlaw creature type. Outlaw is a group of creature types. It reminds me a little bit of historic, right? Yep. Where historic's a group of type of card types. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. um, they've just never used this as creature types before. I don't know if this is the right space for it, but uh, because it's not necessarily as intuitive as some of the other choices they could have made for like creature typing groups. Yeah, like blue players. <laughs> That's just outlaws again. I don't understand. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, slam dunk. Speaking of blue players. Uh, yeah. Crime. <laughs> so let's look at intimidation campaign. It's black, blue, and one for an enchantment. When intimidation campaign enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. You gain one life and you draw a card. Whenever you commit a crime, you may return intimidation campaign to its owner's hand. It returns only from the battlefield. Uh, that's good reminder text. Targeting opponents, anything they control and or cards in their graveyards is a crime. Um, and that that reminder text is not actually fully descriptive of what crimes are. Um, so <laughs> I'd it, say. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It, so targeting your opponents. Yeah. Crime. Um, targeting their permanents, their spells. The spells isn't spelled out Yeah, yet. they don't say spells. They don't say spells. That's their spells point. and abilities on the stack are like counterspelling their spell is committing a crime. Um, sure wow. semantics. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a crime is in the eye of whoever voted in the office holder. Go, go campaign locally to, for change. Yes. Uh, so let's diminish the list of crimes. Honestly, yeah. There's a lot of things that are criminalized that shouldn't be. Uh, but, but, <laughs> but meanwhile, meanwhile. meanwhile Crimes on Thunder Junction and in Magic are targeting your opponent or their stuff or the cards in their graveyard. Um, it is one crime per spell or ability, not per target. So if you have a spell that, say, has it, it deals you know two damage to each of two target creatures, you commit one crime by playing that spell. <laughs> nice. <laughs> two crimes for the price of one. Yep. Yeah, seriously. And untargeted things, notably, don't don't crime. So the so intimidation campaign does not yes, cry. Exactly. This is my mm. point is that the first section where it says it enters, it doesn't target. It just gets them. Each opponent loses one life here on intimidation campaign. Well, it didn't target them. I, if you it, target them, you did a crime. But if you didn't target them, you just got them. Right. It's victimless. Like, it, you, you get, know, you get away with I it. I feel like yeah. your opponent doesn't feel that way, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's victimless. It's just like pouring a bunch of toxic waste through a river. Who like, yeah, you didn't target, ten generations you didn't target right. You're right. You didn't we, target any particular person, so it's not a crime. We have been told many times by the Supreme Court that, in fact, uh, putting waste in the river. Is yep, totally fine. Okay. Totally fine. Yep, totally fine. So, uh, the what, what did I write here? Untargeted things. Yeah, there are crimes due to lobbying by the Edict Super Pact, is what I said. <laughs> Very good. Um, so, spree. 
Spree is very fun and very weird. Uh, so Spree is a new mechanic that deals with kickering spells. It is poly kicker. Um, so it's smuggler surprise here, a single green for an instant, which is important. It has Spree. Choose one or more additional costs. And then it has a plus two mana cost, mill four cards. You may put up to two creature and or land cards from among the milled cards into your hand. Plus green and four, you may put up to two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. And a plus one. Creatures you control with power four or greater gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. It also has a neat little plus up in the upper right to show that there's an additional cost on this. I hope that they continue that going forward. That's actually, I think, a really nice. I love it. That's a really nice thing on things with additional costs on them. Simple, clean, you understand it. Yep. Um, so the so if you're instructed to play something without paying its cost, like say you plotted it, and then you play it later without paying its mana cost, you ignore the mana cost in the upper right, but additional costs you still have to pay. So if you if you plot th the smuggler surprise here, then you don't pay the single green, but you still have to pay you know any combination of two or green and four or one. And when somebody copies a spree, because there's a bunch of copy effects running around, they get all of those things that you paid for. They get all the targets locked in. So the number of targets doesn't change. So if the spree if the if spree adds a target, that number of targets will be locked in on the copy, and the um the the number of targets it copies the exact sprees and when you resolve this you'll do the text in order so with smuggler surprise here it's very important because you can mill four cards find two new creatures that weren't in your graveyard before put them in your hand put those two onto the battlefield and then give them indestructible and hexproof that's at instant speed which means that you could do it before declared Yikes. blockers, which is very bad for your opponent. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, the full thing does cost nine mana if yeah. you were to do that, but yeah, it's a pretty but, good nine mana effect. But it, like you can cost it down. Let's say that you just have two great creatures in your hand, and so you want to pay, yeah. you know, seven? Yeah. Seven is perfectly doable in a lot of limited games. Very so, true. Um, oh, gosh, let me tell you, in my limited games, nine is also very doable, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. a lot of the time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. <laughs> So, saddling up. Uh, so, mounts are a new thing, and they're kind of weird. So, let's talk about Giant Beaver here. <laughs> let's. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's just a, it's it's, just a big musculid. It's just a big beaver. Yeah. It's just a big musculid. Yeah. Mustelid. Yeah. <laughs> mustelid? Yeah, mustelid. Oh, I didn't know what a beaver was. Yeah, it's part of the, part of the mustelid you? family, with, along, along with, like, stoats and ferrets and... Um, otter oh. is an otter in this family? No, probably Stone? not. I think so. Oh, ferret. Uh, that's a cute group. Yeah. Uh, so giant beaver here. Uh, <coughs> if you have a giant beaver, it costs green and three for a four four. It's a creature beaver mount, and it has vigilance. Unbelievable. Sorry. <laughs> Whenever giant beaver attacks while saddled, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature that's saddled at this turn. So if you saddle your giant beaver, you'll get bigger. <laughs> I can't believe this is printed. I'm sorry, I can't I, hold it in anymore. I, I chose this for a reason. I, I, I want to make sure that you understand. But it's just like, I mean, obviously they knew what they were doing. And oh, a yeah. part of me just can't believe it got through. Yeah. Now, I, I think now it, our resident I, flavor text didn't just get writer. through, but it's, people chose this. Megan, yeah. did you name this card? <laughs> I have no, I don't think so. Probably not. It was just probably, you know, some of them come from design ready to go. <laughs> Unchanged throughout the entire process. I feel like they. This was done on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm curious. Do you do the flavor text before the art is done? Um, I don't know if I can tell you that. Okay, that's fair enough. So I, I assume that the art takes longer to do than flavor text. From yeah. a just a structural perspective, it takes artists time to produce a lot yeah. of art. So it's likely that it's either contemporaneous with some of the art or after a lot of the art. Yes. So I find it. My guess would be that this art already existed. But again, <laughs> you aren't telling me anything. I'm just, I'm just speculating. speculating. Just yeah. speculating. Um, I mean, so, you know, like, I'm just saying, I don't think that it got by anyone. I think that it was chosen on purpose. Yeah. Well, that's my. Um, just, because creature types say. are usually chosen. Mm -hmm. so. I'm just going to go that pre-release and saddle a giant beaver. You know yeah. what I mean? And it, it, for a giant be beaver, you have one. to saddle three, this giant <laughs> beaver. This, this needs, this, this three beaver. Three people? No, I mean, no, no, no. It could be one big three person. Three power of Yeah, of But person. it could be so, three. So to so saddle, yeah, it could be three. It could be any number. Wow. You could You could have 15 people. Saddle this beaver. This, this is a wild so, party on Thunder Joke. Tap any number of other creatures you control with total power three or more. This mount becomes saddled until end of turn. Saddle only is a sorcery. So this is like, I don't know, like half a vehicle, but it starts as a creature. 
It's yeah. all the, this this beaver is always ready to go. It's always ready to fight. How dare you call a horse half a vehicle? <laughs> A horse predates a vehicle, okay? Yeah, but just because something existed in the past doesn't make it as good as modern technology. Then you tell me a car is twice a horse. <laughs> that also is going to make me mad, but... Well, I mean, horsepower I, is what they say. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And so you can tell me a car is six times a horse. Do you think horsepower I, still is like with the car? Like it's like you're like, oh, this is eight no, horsepower. I think that they're making it up. No, they picked an arbitrary value for, yes. a, for a unit of force. Uh, I wish it was actually how fast a horse could go. It's not it's how much power a yeah. horse can be. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a unit. It's not a unit of. It's not it's a, unit a unit of speed. It's a unit of force. How much powerful a horse is? Yeah, it's, it, yes. it's it's meant to be roughly like how much can you pull? How much can the horse pull? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh. They, but it's a, it's a but unit it, of force. But yeah. they, it's not kept up with horse technology. <laughs> no, it's it's entirely an, like they picked an arbitrary number. It's just like how long is a foot? It's not the length of a foot. It's the length of my foot, but it's not the length of your foot. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I guess I also have the question. Okay. Wow. We're really getting, yeah, we're, we're in the weeds. Sorry. Than we otherwise <laughs> do. But I will say, you know, for a long time that there were horses who could win the triple crown. And then there was a huge stint in the modern era of horse racing mm -hmm. when no horse won the triple crown for yeah. a very, very, very long time, which was only recently broken. And so the question is, is like, did horses get less powerful individually or have horses overall gotten more powerful? Oh. And so it's, it's like I which in which direction was the playing field somewhat leveled? That's a question for you. Let's continue. Yeah, on that's good. I could I could talk about this, but yes. uh, like so if so like I was saying, these are kind of loosely a vehicle. They crew like a vehicle. You need a unit of power, but any number of things could can mount up this beaver. So the you can saddle multiple times most of the time. There's one thing that doesn't let you. So you could like have a three power creature saddle the beaver, have another three-power creature, saddle the creature separately, the second activation, or you could combine them in just one, one activation. You can do this only as a sorcery, so you can't saddle defensively. You can only saddle offensively. Uh, and the uh, my question was, why can five elephants ride a horse? Uh, because that's the nature of magic. Like, yeah. wh why can things without feet wear shoes? So the... Saddling doesn't mean anything on its own. Every creature with saddle says has a if it's, if it was saddled, usually it becomes better in combat in some way. Um, there's like ones that copy the creatures that saddled them. There's ones that get like the beaver that make the things bigger if they attack. There's other ones that like give evasion to uh, get evasion based on being saddled. Like there's a huge variety, so you just have to read what they do. Mm -hmm. And you can't you can't saddle up on the defense like you said, yeah. which they said was because in in testing it, it responded very strangely in yeah. games you're like this doesn't make any sense so it's not yeah. like a vehicle in that way so that's yeah. why it's half a vehicle yeah and it, because they're all like a combat buff to that creature in some way right kind of they like it makes sense that they can just be on the attack you you get on your horse and you you know ride forward at full tilt right yeah you you can have a getaway car you can't have a getaway beaver <laughs> don't try me well <laughs> I mean, it's not illegal. <laughs> I bet you just can't. <laughs> oh, this next card is a cutie. Yeah. Um, we're talking about plot is the next mechanic. So I'm using Lone Shark as my example of a basic plot card. It's blue and three for a three, four creature shark rogue. And when Lone Shark enters the battlefield, if you've cast two or more spells this turn, draw a card. And it has plot for blue and three. You may pay blue and three and exile this card from your hand. And then cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. And then plot only as a sorcery. So what this does is it takes the card, sets it away in exile, and then later you get to play it for free. You can't do it this turn. So if something is a lower plot cost, what you're doing is sending it into the future for the lower plot cost. Some things have higher plot costs because they're better when they're cast off of plot. Um, Lone Shark, the plot is relevant. A lot of these plot things are relevant because they want to combine with other spells. If you plot Lone Shark on four, um, you, it says when it enters the battlefield, if you've cast two or more spells this turn, so you'll... On the next turn, you know, cast some other spell and then cast Lone Shark. Sick. Which is normally a four cost spell with that that text when it enters the battlefield. If you cast two or more spells this turn, draw a card. You'd be like, that. that's never going to happen. What am I going to double spell with a four in limited? Yeah. yeah I, it just doesn't come up that much. But with this, you get to send it into the future and then double spell. You trade off the fact that it can't block that turn. It's really interesting, I think. Yeah. I love plot. I think it's yeah. super cool. It is very, very similar to Foretell, but face up. Yep. Like, the mechanics are basically exactly the same as foretell, but face up and the things can become plotted. So the, it, this happened occasionally with foretell. There's a bunch of cards in the set that like 
plot the top card of your library or like plot a card from your graveyard. And what they do is they do the same thing. It'll The turn that you plot it, that it becomes plotted, you can't cast it. But on your future turns during your main phase when the stack is empty, you can cast it. Note that this, the reminder text is a little vague on it. It says plot only as a sorcery and then cast it as a sorcery on a later turn. That's just trying to cram words together. Reminder text isn't rules text. So you can literally only cast it on the main on your main phase when the stack is empty. Even if you have something that lets you cast spells as though they had flash, doesn't help you. Um, and, oh, interesting. Okay. And it does say cast. So if you end up yep. plotting a land, that's... That's not great. It's too bad for it you, I guess. It shouldn't usually happen. Um, like all the things try to plot only spells. Okay. In theory, if you have a, like a modal double face card that has a land on the front and a spell on the back, which doesn't exist, you could end up with lands plotted. Uh, also in theory, I don't know if there's anything that plots objects off the stack. I suppose if you, if you had two painter servants out adding color to a face down card that was a land, <laughs> you could end up plotting one of the two face down lands. Mr. Corner case yeah, strikes yeah, again. Don't worry about it. Um, so the other things is plotting isn't casting it. It isn't activating an ability. So you can't use something that counters activated abilities or countered spells to send it when they're plot, putting it away to plot. You can counter it as a spell later when they cast it. So... Right, so yeah. plot, plotted, they're yeah. just doing it. Yeah, it's it a just special happens. action. They're letting yeah. you know that the future is going to hold you getting loan sharked. And you're like, oh, well, I'm glad to know that that loan shark's coming for my knees. Man, uh, at least I knew about it. Yeah, yep. exactly. Um, an example of a card Very that- polite. Yeah, an example of a card that plots arbitrary things is Lila, undefeated slick shot. Uh, so she's red, blue, one. She's a three, three legendary creature, human rogue. She has prowess. Again, one of these one-off mechanics. Um, so whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Lila will get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And she says, whenever you cast a multicolored instant or sorcery spell from your hand, exile that spell instead of putting it in your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, it becomes plotted. Sick. It's very good. Uh, notably, there's, so there's a multicolored split card on the, the bonus sheet, Crime and Punishment. Uh, if you cast one half, it's multicolored. When you get the chance to cast in the God of Plot, you pick how you cast it. So anything that you would have normally made a choice about casting, you can choose. So crime and punishment, you cast crime, Lila plots it, and then you could cast either crime or punishment later. Wow. Uh, very good. Um, and it's relevant with the multicolored ones from the last set if you're building a deck. Uh, so the murders, multicolored spells that had, that had you know, instant sorcery flotsam splits. Flotsam and Jetsam. Yeah, Flotsam and Jetsam. You could plot Flotsam and then cast Jetsam later. Um, the... It lets you just do weird things. There's like, there's the Kellen, the multicolored Kellen with the multicolored adventure mm -hmm. for murders. If you cast the adventure, Lila will plot him and you get to choose whether or not you send him away on an adventure or you send him to plot. You probably send him to plot because then you can cast the adventure again and then send him on an adventure. Wow. Nice. It's really good. Actually. Value. Uh, so uh, Lila lets you do a lot of weird stuff. And uh, as mentioned with Spree, it'll let you, if you like, cast a spree card or plot a spree card somehow, it only discounts the main cost. Um, also plot, coming out of plot is an alternative cost. So if there's things with alternative costs that you want to play somehow that are like, you can pay this cost instead of instead of paying its mana cost, you have to pick the plot cost or that cost, but you can only cast it from exile for the plot cost of zero. So. Sure. Plot is the, is the complicated thing in this set. Gotcha. Um, Fancy mercenary tokens are the next thing I want to talk about. So these are just something cool that you're going to run into a bunch. So like Earth the Joe Frontier Mentor here is white red two for a two four legendary creature core advisor. When Earth the Joe enters the battlefield, create a one one red mercenary creature token with tap target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. And then she also says whenever you activate an ability that targets a creature or player, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy which is really cool. It makes your mercenaries twice as effective. But the this there's a bunch of things that make these special mercenaries. Uh, I see this with shapeshifters a lot where people are like, well, shapeshifters are all types. And I'm like, no, they, they aren't all types. Things that have the changeling ability are all types. Mercenaries don't just have this ability. Just these tokens do. And like one other random mercenary creature in the set has it. Um, also, this isn't a crime. I don't, you can't target your opponent's stuff with this. So this yeah. doesn't let you commit crimes. And those mercenaries, as we know, are outlaws. Yeah, they're outlaws, but they don't commit crimes. No. Who knows why? <laughs> Individual cards. 
So, Rodeo Pyromancers. That's a great card name yeah, right there. Th- this set is full of really good card names. Rodeo Pyromancers is red and three for a three, four creature human mercenary. So it's an outlaw. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, add red, red. Uh, All right. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Eh, first spell discounted. The thing is that if they're your first spell, the next spell you cast isn't your first spell. They can see the things that happen in the game before they were on the battlefield. Um, this isn't their first rodeo. Yeah, this isn't their first rodeo. <laughs> uh, they, they, wow, that I did not even catch that when I was like. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep. Their first rodeo, they don't give you mana. The, the first future rodeos, they probably <laughs> yeah. give you mana. Oh, that's excellent. Um, yeah, but they, yeah, they, they will see, see spells that were cast before they were cast. Uh, throw from the saddle. Green and one for a sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one to end of turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it instead if it's a mount. Then it deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Uh, so this is an example because mounts are creature type. They have a bunch of things that care about mounts in the set. But the most important thing from throw from the saddle is that it needs two targets. You have to have an opponent's creature in order to, to buff yours. Um, and it, even though your creature is just punching, you're not fighting, they still need to have a creature because it has two targets in it. It doesn't say up to one target creature you don't control. Megan, this happened to you. Yeah, this did happen to me. Broke my shoulder. <laughs> this is a real life event it for truly Megan is. in Megan's life. Yeah. But I would never be mean to a horse by using spurs, so that's not why. It just got spooked by another horse behind it. Yeah. I rode a horse that got spooked once. It shot me straight up into the air and then back yeah. down on it. <laughs> I I literally don't have full rotation in my right shoulder because I got thrown from a horse like this. But you still love horse. I do still love horse. You should go <laughs> become really buff so that you can throw the horse back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a long time ago, so I think that that horse has crossed its right oh. now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We are topic I, dark. I, yeah, yeah, no, I, I intended not, to make a joke. But also, I want to say it's not dark just because it was a long time yeah. ago. It's fine. Yeah. The horse just got old. Every, Nothing bad every, happened to it. Everything <laughs> ends. Uh, even... Even draft boosters had, exactly. had to go to the Rainbow Bridge. Even draft boosters. <laughs> that horse is now enjoying draft boosters oh, on the other man. side of the Rainbow yeah. Bridge. I'm so glad that horse gets to play a good quality draft. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yep. Definitely draft in Boros, though, gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> Very horse colors. Very horse colors. Oh. Uh, luxurious okay. locomotive. Uh, it is a vehicle, so we have both mounts and vehicles in the set. Luxurious locomotive is five mana for a six five vehicle. Artifact. Whenever Luxurious Locomotive attacks, create a treasure token for each creature that crewed it this turn. It has crew one, but unusually it says activate only once each turn. Uh, this doesn't mean that you can only crew it with one creature. This means that everybody has to get on the train at the same time. Yeah, because you could crew yeah. after combat and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, well, the you can crew as an instant. And so yeah. you could like, you could like crew, de- it, Declare attackers. Your opponent didn't kill it before you attacked, and now you're going to crew more in response to the trigger. It's uh, I, I assume that they were just like, look, everybody gets on the train at the same time. Yeah, like it's fine. That's cool though. Yeah, this is a nice locomotive, and no one is hopping on in the middle. Yep, you can't hijack this train. No, they figured it out. There's yep. a b- band on saw. the beginning. Not yep. at all. Return the favor. It's red, red for an instant with spree. Uh, it has plus one. To copy target instant spell, sorcery spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. And it has plus one. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Oh, boy. So you can spend four mana to take your opponent's spell, copy it, and then also change the target. Which is a the card Wild Ricochet. This is just a better Wild Ricochet. Um, note also that Return the Favor lets you copy your opponent's abilities. Which really isn't anything that we've ever had before. So... I don't know what shenanigans people are going to get up to with it, but you can copy other people's stuff. And the other thing is, uh, one of the thing about spree cards, I mentioned the number of targets is locked in at the time that you pick all of your spree modes. Also, for each instance of the word target, you could pick the same thing again. If something only has one instance of the word target, so it's like destroy six target creatures, you need six different targets. But for this here, you can target the same spell with both components because it has the word target twice. And so it's going to come up with other spree cards where it's like, yeah, you can just pick the same thing for every target possible on it. You don't need two distinct objects because each mode could target the same thing again. It's one of those cards that just looks dangerous somehow, some way. Yeah, there's something weird going on here. It's very powerful. Um, Shifting Grift. 
is a card that's going to be in bulk boxes forever, and I'm going to keep playing it in decks because it does something really unusual. Uh, blue, blue for a sorcery. It is Spree. Plus two, exchange control of two target creatures. Plus one, exchange control of two target artifacts. Plus one, exchange control of two target enchantments. This is wild. So both things have to exist for an exchange to take place. Um, and they have to be under different players' controls. They could, but the thing is that they don't have to be under different players' controls at the start of the spell. They can become diff under different players' controls later. Because you can exchange an artifact creature to your opponent and then exchange it back to you for a random artifact. <laughs> oh, wow. Think about it, because oh, it does boy. things in order. So yeah. if I have an artifact creature that is really bad, and you have a, a normal creature that's really good, I, and I have a and I have an artifact that's extra, extra bad. I could exchange my artifact creature for your creature and then the artifact creature for my artifact. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Um, it's, I genuinely don't have a good mental map of how this is going to work out in a lot of games, but you can, in multiplayer and commander, you could exchange random things between random people. It's very weird. Seems fun. Yep. Six mana for the whole shebang. Yeah. But if you're doing the, the shenanigans that I'm talking about, it's only five. Mm. All right. Yeah. And having to own two different, Weird permanence. Uh, take for a ride. Red and two, sorcery. Take for a ride has flash as long as you've committed a crime this turn. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. This card is insane. They don't print. <laughs> I know, they never print this. They, they, they haven't printed these in a while. They printed an instant speed ray of command in the last set, but it gave the creature, it made the creature suspected so it couldn't block. Right. Um, with take for a ride, if you've committed a crime this turn, like if your opponent attacks you, you can commit a crime and then take it, like steal one of their attackers and kill a different attacker with it. It is wildly unreasonable at three mana. Cause do you know what? If you're committing a crime, you don't care. It, well, it's sure. But like, should you be rewarded for your crimes? Oh. This is a big reward the, for oh, committing this crimes. this is Thunder Junction. Yeah. Uh, so be, a, yeah, be aware that if your opponent can commit crimes and has some mana open, they can take you for a ride. And that's a blowout. Yeah, it's a blowout. Blow. It's a really bad blowout. Yeah. Um, and also you should value this card highly when you're playing it and when you're drafting and stuff. Uh, this town ain't big enough. Another really good name. Blue and four for an instant. This spell costs three less to cast if it targets a permanent you control. Return up to two target non-land permanents to their owner's hands. So uh, it says a permanent you control. It doesn't say... Both halves have to, both bounces have to be your permanents. Uh, I had to read it twice to make sure that I got that because you could target your thing and their thing and pick up the, pick up both for just two mana, which is pretty good. Yeah. Or you can target two of your own permanents for two mana. It's the same. Um, or you can target both their stuff for, for five. This is actually just a very interesting, well-costed spell, I think. Annie joins up. This is a cycle of joins up cards. Who yes. Are joining Oko's crime gang. Yep. Um, and yeah, cause Oko is the most powerful planeswalker ever printed. Definitely needs a crime gang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so white, green one or white, green, red one for a legendary enchantment. When Annie joins up, enters the battlefield, it deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. And if a triggered ability of a legendary creature you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time, which sounds pretty straightforward. It just, you know, makes an additional trigger. But that's a very weird, like, conditional on this a little bit. So there's, a, we've talked before about reflexive triggers, which are like, uh, when you do a thing, uh, so like, you know, when when this attacks, you may pay some mana, when you do, do a thing. Um, and so it's a trigger that makes a trigger. That trigger from the trigger isn't a trigger from the legendary creature. <laughs> what a sentence. Yeah, so... You'll get two copies. So I the, the one example that I have of that is in this set, Breaches, the Blast Maker. So Breaches is red, blue, one for a 3-3 legend, three, three legendary creature goblin pirate. And he says, Menace, and whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you may sacrifice an artifact. If you do, flip a coin. When you win the flip, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. When you lose the flip, breaches the blast maker deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. Oh, wow. Wow, so you just, just win a flip either way. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 there's two good results. This, right, is the, this is the optimal kind of coin flip card. Like, you're, it, it chooses one of two good results, like, randomly for you. Um, but so breaches here. He has this trigger. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you may sacrifice an artifact. So that goes in the stack. Um, and he joins up, makes a second copy of it. 
then for the first one, you sacrifice an artifact, you do its thing, and say you lose the flip. Um, it deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. You only got one when you lost the flip trigger. Gotcha. Uh, because this triggered ability isn't a triggered ability of a legendary creature, it's a triggered ability of a triggered ability. Gotcha. Weird. So it's just the first, like, the first yes. thing that happened. Yes. But th you saw that second copy of the original breaches yes. triggered that you may sacrifice a thing and then flip it a second coin for. So, yeah. So you and can so, do that. Yeah. You, okay. won't get, you won't get four results. You'll only get two. That makes sense. Okay. It, yeah. um, it took a minute, but yeah. I, we got uh, there. Th this also applies to... Um, to uh, ref delayed triggers. So there might be a creature, there's creatures that say like, when this attacks, do a thing at end of combat. So what that does is it makes a trigger when it attacks and then it sets up, that trigger makes a second trigger that'll happen at end of combat. Yeah. Uh, so there's like a flame rush mount that says when it attacks, uh, make a token copy of the thing that settled it. And at end of combat, sacrifice that thing. Um, it, you don't get two sacrifice triggers per thing that you copied. Yeah. You only get one sacrifice trigger per thing that you copied. Um, because, and that one makes sense. Like you're like, well, why would I get two, two of those triggers? Yeah. So, uh, it, it, it'll be weird. It, like, like if you're like, but I want four breaches. Trigger. Yeah. I mean, cast four, cast extra spells. <laughs> um, Avon interrupter. Another it's, cutie. Yeah. It's a bird, but with a job. Uh, so Avon interrupter is white, white one with, for a two, two creature bird rogue. It has flash and flying. And when Avon Interrupter enters the battlefield, exile target spell. It becomes plotted. So you can send your opponent's... Sp oh, yeah. You could just plot their face down cards. So it's possible for you to plot one of your opponent's face down uh, face down lands that they cast. Because yeah. the, there's the branch of Vidugazi. Uh, it says spells your opponent's cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast. Oh. So this is an additional cost. Stacks on top of plot. Um, it's obviously targeted at plot, but it also impacts a bunch of other things. Enlisted Worm was on the bonus sheet for the last set, which meant you could have just recently played with Cascade in Limited. Uh, it makes you pay extra for Cascade. Uh, it's pretty good for that. Um, it's a lot wider in scope than just making plot expensive. Uh, this is very cool, honestly. A good new hate bear. It Yeah, this is a really good hate bear because it, it basically counters a spell. And they can't recast it that same turn. So, like, if it's their first pre-combat main phase and you send out to plot land, they won't be able to cast it that turn. They have to wait until their next turn rude. to cast it. Very rude. Bonnie Paul Clearcutter is up next. Yeah, along with Bo, uh, her ox. What a good ox. He's a good ox. He's very hungry. He's eating whole trees. Uh, like, the scale is pretty yeah, wild. I love this. it. Uh, so, uh, I don't necessarily need to read Bonnie Paul or Claim Jumper. Um, I just really like these cards. Oh, you just <laughs> wanted to say I you just liked wanted, them. I wanted to say that I like them. Um, I grew up in a town that has the Lumberjack World Championships in it. Uh, I Paul Bunyan is a thing that I've been exposed to my whole life. This is a Paul Bunyan card that makes a blue ox. I just, I have no rules notes. Yeah. Claim Jumper was so appealing to me when I saw it. I was like, oh, oh, I could make a rabbit cowboy. And so. Uh, <laughs> I love his ears poking out of that oh, little yeah. hat. He's yes. very, it like, he just looks great. And so the, like, I, I have an upcoming D&D campaign where we're in character generation right now. And I'm like, can I torpedo the character that I've already made and replace it with a rabbit gunslinger? Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah. So that's uh, just, I'm just saying that there there are things to love in this set. As yeah. it, I have comments, but there's a lot of fun, good things. My uh, high school mascot was Lumberjacks. Oh, Okay. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That is a pretty good kind one. Kind of unique. Yeah. yeah. I could make a joke about cultural cultural appropriation of lumberjacks, but you probably actually were from a lumber town. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah 100%. <laughs> um, our, our high school mascot was the Hurricanes for some inexplicable reason. <laughs> There's wow. no hurricanes in Minnesota. Yeah, I, I was it was say, northern that Wisconsin. Was cultural appropriation. Yeah, appropriation. <laughs> yeah I, was, I was like, I don't know why. We could have been the lumberjacks. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. The, the, the town next door has a giant cowboy and a huge rodeo. It could have been lumberjacks and cowboys fighting it out in northern Wisconsin. Oh, that's cool. But that, that isn't no. That isn't what no, people chose. chose. I don't know. Um, so Eret, the big guiler, she is black, blue, white, one for a four, four legendary creature, human warlock, as mentioned, which is her warlocks. Uh, so she is also an outlaw. She has lifelink and whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a non land permanent, an opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to that aura's mana value, gain control of that permanent, i.e. the opponent's creature for as long as that aura is attached to it. Weird. Or the opponent's non-land permanent. So 
yes, it's very weird. This is a word maze. I had to read this multiple times to figure out like what that permanent like connected to because an aura is a permanent. And the, what this does is it lets you play like, so if you, your opponent has a three cost creature and you have a four cost aura, um, you could play that four cost aura on their creature. And it's also a control magic in addition to whatever else. It's I'm doing. just curious about what auras are, am I casting on my opponent's creatures that are not super detrimental to if I then ended up with the creature? Well, it, you just play your Rancor on their one drop. I can put it on their creature? Yeah, you could play whatever auras on whatever creatures you want. They're just enchant creature. Really? Mostly, yeah. I so always thought it had to be my creature. No, if it says enchant creature you control, yeah. then it does. But there's yeah. plenty of enchantments that say just enchant creature. Yeah, Rancor creature. just says enchant creature. So you, like, they, yeah. So if they if they have a <laughs> if they have a Llanowar Elf and you have a Rancor in your hand and you have a Ret out, you Rancor their Llanowar Elf and take the Llanowar Elf as long as the Rancor is attached. If they disenchant the Rancor, the Llanowar Elf goes home. Wow. Uh, I'm not filled with Rancor anymore. I'm going I'm home. I'm going yes. home. <laughs> well, um, she just became a lot more appealing to me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she she looks cool. She looks powerful. She's aura themed just like uh, just like she was back home on uh, on, you know, um the place where she comes yeah, from. Yeah, the place where she comes from. Is on, she uh, hang out with Marchesa? She no, 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 no. She's, she's from, from um, the place that we've recently been to. Yeah, she's from uh, New Capanna. No, no, Eldrain. Oh, Eldrain. Yeah, she's oh, she's yeah, with the, the function, apple. Yeah, yeah. The, like she was part of the three witches that defeated the the Frexians That's there right. and got super yeah. boons and stuff. And so Eret's poisoned apple and stuff were things. So um, again, I don't know why she why she's here, but you know. She's very cool and calls out to her home a lot. Uh, Fibble Thip, lost on the range. Uh, th this is one I don't object to being here. Like, Fibble Thip's just <laughs> funny lost. anywhere. He's yep, lost. He's lost. Lost on the uh, range. So, Fibble Thip is blue, blue one for a one, one legendary creature homunculus. He is ward two, and you may look at the top card of your library anytime. The top card of your library has plot. The plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may plot non land cards from the top of your library. Um, so we talked about crime punishment. Crime punishment also doesn't work very well with Fibblethip. Um, if you want to plot a split card, you have to pay the whole mana cost combined. Uh, so that'd be seven for crime punishment. Yeah. And then you only get to cast one side coming out of plot. It's not great. Um, the likewise, uh, you can do some weird things with like double faced cards. Fibblethip lets you plot, uh, so there's there's the Valky that has the Tybalt on the back. Yeah. Uh, you could plot the Valky for two mana and then cast the Tybalt. For two Whoa. mana? For nothing. For nothing. It's for free. For free. It's free. It's a free. <gasps> you pay two mana to plot that. All right, let's go team. Yeah. I mean, this vault, this vault, this Valky Tybalt has been trouble ever since it was yeah, printed. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, they could have just not printed it that way. <laughs> there's there's choices they could have made. simply not printed it that <laughs> Left way. Right. Valky could cost four or five men and have different abilities. They could do whatever they want. Oh man, do you see this new competitor playing the Fibble Thip Tybalt Valky combo? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Also, just look, I love that there's like these huge dragons fighting in the background. It's yeah. very cute. And Fibble yeah. Thip's like, what? It's just like, what's going here? on here? Yeah. And he stole a cowboy hat somewhere. Uh, combo, profiteering he mayor. that hat, Rob. How dare wow, you? Maria says Fibble Oh, Thip I suppose he isn't a yeah, criminal. You're he's right. He's a just a homunculus. So he, he probably didn't commit a crime to get that hat. Uh, Combo, Profiteering Mayor. Why is he here? Uh, so Black White 1 uh, for a 2-4 Legendary Creature Human Advisor. Yeah, this is the weirdest of all of them, Rob. Oh, I this isn't. Uh, man, there's so many weird ones. Because he looks like he's mayoring, mayoring in his town, even in the art. Yeah. He doesn't look like he's on, Yeah, you know. Yeah, he's Thunder just still Junction. on Ravnica. He looks like he's mayoring in the Hunger Games. Sure. Yeah, he does. So whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your opponent's control, for each of them, create a tapped token that's a copy of it. This ability triggers only once each turn. And whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So uh, this triggers once, but for any number of tokens. So if your opponent makes like three mercenaries at a time, you'll get three mercenaries. Uh, they'll be tapped. It triggers for non-creature tokens. If your opponent makes five treasures, you get five tapped treasures. It's very good. Um, Girid Mirror of the Wilds also has this copy tokens kind of thing going on. Uh, copying tokens is a little weird sometimes because you get anything that they entered with. That's their base characteristic. So the mercenaries, you know, creates a mercenary with that tap ability. But sometimes it'll say, you know, create a token with this and it gains haste until end of turn. So you have to pay a bunch of attention to whether or not the haste, like it, you know, with haste, it keeps the haste yeah. when you copy it. If it just gained haste, um, Sukenzin... Crucible of Defiance, 
the land, the the channel land makes mm-hmm. two one one tokens and grants them haste. Um, and so they, if you copied those tokens, your tokens wouldn't have haste. It mostly doesn't matter with combo because they enter tapped, but it matters with um, Jared Mirror of the Wilds, which gives your non tokens the ability to tap to copy one of your tokens. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and yeah, and both of them will happily copy non creature tokens, and there's a bunch of those in this set as well. Um, Obeka, Splitter of Seconds. Uh, she is red, black, blue, one for a 2 5 legendary creature, Ogre Warlock. She is Menace and Flavor Text. I just want to be clear here. She's very cool. I want to build a commander deck for her. Her ability is whenever Obeka deals combat damage to a player, you get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. So if she hits your opponent for two, you get two upkeeps before your next main phase. Uh, giant growth. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. There are six cards in play boosters that have the word upkeep on them. She is one of them. And one of them is Mana Vault. Okay. And like, they, they, they're all rares. Um, OTJ doesn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, yeah, it's not. Just play Prismatic Bridge, Rob. Yeah, she's yeah. Prismatic Bridge would be very good with her. <laughs> I, I it, like she's I, I she's exactly the design I want for a legend. Actually, she does almost nothing in limited. Like you probably like you. Uh, she's a two five minutes for four. Not great. So, but then she does something cool that you need a bunch of other cards to enable. Um, I I wish they would make more designs like this. So in upkeep, just for clarification, what occurs during upkeep, Rob? Nothing naturally. Uh, anything that says at the beginning of your upkeep. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing naturally. So when people say untap, upkeep, draw, it just, they're not untap saying anything. Untap is its own. Upkeep yeah. is its own and draw is yeah, its, it's own. Yeah, it's, it's own phase. you're getting the upkeep slice. Yeah. But and what, it, other than like prismatic bridge, like nothing, gen- nothing, nothing, nothing automatically happens, happens during upkeep. upkeep. Well, so it's just like a main phase. Nothing automatically happens in a main phase. You need things that happen in a main phase. To make your main phase. Oh, that anything, makes right? sense that when you put it that way. Wow. Yeah. Like your draw step has a thing that happens. Your yeah. untap step has a thing that happens. The cleanup step has a thing that happens that the like the game does. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like you need cards that say, you know, at the beginning of your upkeep. Wow. Upkeep worthless unless something changed yeah. that. Well, and they they've made a lot they've made cards not use the upkeep. Why don't sagas use the upkeep? Oh, oh yeah. why don't they? They could. Maybe they, because they knew that this card was coming. <laughs> or, well, no, it, what's actually probably more likely is they realize that players will untap and draw automatically because they had produced so few upkeep trigger cards for a long time. Yeah. And so they said, people are just going to draw and then they're going to get in trouble for missing sagas. And so we're just going to yeah. move it to the I, way that people I got in trouble playing. missing sagas anyway. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Maria, um, you want to know a card that would be real nice with this? What? Anno on the Ruin Sage. You remember yeah. this guy? At the beginning of your upkeep, each player sacrifices a non vampire creature. Yeah. You don't have to sacrifice your Make vampires. Make it casually this, happen <laughs> two more times. I applaud this idea. See, there you go. All right. Uh, so. Oh my God, I love yes. oh, Roxanne. She's, so she's, she's wonderful. Is that a chicken? Like, is she riding a she, giant oh, chicken? Yes, she is riding a giant oh chicken. Oh my God. Why would you not? <laughs> so uh, Roxanne, uh, she's a uh, Roxanne Starfall Savant. She is green, red, three for a four, three legendary creature cat druid. Whenever Roxanne's Starfall Savant enters the battlefield or attacks, create a tapped colorless artifact token named Meteorite with when Meteorite enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target and tap add one mana of any color. Whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, add one mana of any type that artifact token produced, which is super cool. She makes Meteorites and then they tap for two mana. Nice. She also makes your treasures twice as good. Treasures tap mm. as part of their sacrifice. So you can play Roxanne and then ship a bunch of treasures for double mana immediately. Sick. Um, she's just super cool. Um, it, I just wanted to make sure people know because if they if they aren't super familiar with treasures, they might not realize that treasures yeah. tap. Gold does not, uh, it's not the same. You just sacrifice it for mana. I've got to so. say, I'm really mad that this chicken didn't make the cut in whoever was deciding what cards got into the set because this Look chicken mount. Look at this Look chicken. at this chicken mount. Yeah, why is there not a bird mount? I mean, it could be, him. what would it be called? Chicken, chicken dinner. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> chicken run. Chicken run. Yeah, there chicken it is. Run. Chicken run. Yeah, and you get on the chicken. Although yeah. there is the burb that run. Yeah. The, the road runner. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's not yeah. a mount though. No. Dang it. Uh, so ancient cornucopia. Ancient cornucopia is green and two for an artifact. Whenever you cast a spell that's one or more colors, you may gain one life for each of that spell's colors. Do this only once each turn. And then it taps to add one mana of any color. So this is a three cost mana rock. 
This is a very weird trigger. I don't think you realize how weird it is. Normally these things would say trigger only once each turn. No, this says do this only once each turn. You can just decline and then it triggers again because you may gain the life. So you could just stop the game? No, no, no. So like I cast a, I cast a one man, a one cost, a one color spell and I don't want one life. So I decline. Then my next spell is two colors. Oh, so I, I take it on the second trigger. Once I've, once I've elected to take the mana from this, it stops triggering. Huh. Yeah. Weird. It's okay. very weird. Uh, I don't like they could have templated it. So it just, just gave you the life. Yeah. Or whenever you cast your first spell, that's one of more colors. It, 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 like it doesn't. Yeah. It's just weird. I guess my real question is why is the set symbol on this? Just oh. a little like icon of the enterprise. It is the enterprise. It's a vault door. <laughs> I, oh, it's the Enterprise. It's the Enterprise. <laughs> I know it really is. So if it was any class of ship, right, this would be like the Bozeman, which is a. Um, all right. All right. Uh, so what is the What class is the Bozeman? Uh, <laughs> also, you're telling me that Bozeman. The USS all the love to Bozeman, Montana. But you're telling me that that far into the future, Bozeman, Montana had enough of an impact that they would name a ship after it. So it wasn't you- a very big ship. It's Soyuz okay, class. Yeah, Soyuz, Soyuz class. class. That's the that's the class because that's the one that Kelsey's Gram- Kelsey Grammer's character um, ah. pilots in, or is captain of in the in cause and effect, like top five Trek episodes. Great episodes. Yeah, top five top five next gen episodes. Yeah, I agree. Um, so assimilation ages. This is blue white one for an artifact equipment. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target creature until it leaves the battlefield. Whenever Assimilation Aegis becomes attached to a creature, for as long as Assimilation Aegis remains attached to it, that creature becomes a copy of a creature card exiled with Assimilation Aegis. I fell asleep while you were saying this, but go on. So what this is, and it has a quick cost of two. So I play this, and I O-ring one of your creatures. Great. Now I take it, and I equip it to my whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, because it's now a copy of your creature that that I ate under it. Okay, nice. got it. That, that's it. That's the whole thematic thing. Uh, the thing is that it's, so the stuff I wanted to mention is activating it, targeting creatures already equipping doesn't reset anything. Um, it it only like overwrites onto a, being a copy at the time it becomes attached. Um, but it does overwrite every time you move it to move it over to the new creature. Uh, and so the timestamp for the copy effect is based on when you move it. So it will... Other copy effects that were in the past, it overrides things that aren't copy effects apply on top, the normal the normal stuff. But it's all based on when you actually attach this to something. And it doesn't care how it becomes attached. You don't have to worry about the equipability having to be done. If there's a creature that just arbitrarily attaches equipment, Assimilation Aegis will make things into arbitrary copies. Nice. Card seems um, sick. It's pretty cool. Esoteric Duplicator. Honestly, this card seems like your card. Like <laughs> super much your card. So this is a blue and two for an artifact clue. And whenever you sacrifice esoteric duplicator or another artifact, you may pay two mana. If you do, at the beginning of the next end step, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. Oh yeah. And two mana and sacrifice it to draw a card, like a clue does. Amazing. You, yeah, you ship it, you pay two mana, and the next turn it comes back. It comes back. Wow. Yeah. Love it. Let's um, do it. Endless I, clues. Yeah, there's also somebody I saw somebody do a, a figure out a combo with um Perennial weird card, uh, Ugin's Nexus. That is a that is an artifact that prevents you from taking adi- anybody from taking additional turns. But when it dies, you take an extra turn after this one. And so if you, oh, <laughs> well, don't tell Megan about that. Ooh, yeah. Here we go. So if you sacrifice a, an Ugin's Nexus on your end step with Esoteric Duplicator on the battlefield, you take infinite turns. Holy cow! It's really straightforward. It's very funny. Oh, boy. incredible! Uh, you need a, you need a, you need a third card. You need a way to sacrifice artifacts arbitrarily. Oh, we'll make it work. Yeah, yeah. It's we very it's, it like it's very doable. Okay. Um. Final showdown. Uh, you talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, single white for an instant. It has spree. Plus one. All creatures lose all abilities until end of turn. Plus one. Choose a creature you control. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Uh, plus white, white three. Destroy all creatures. Uh, this one is another one where it's important that you do all the things in order. This has no targets. Your opponent does not know what thing you're going to give indestructible to until this resolves. They know that you paid that spree cost. You have to announce I'm paying the second spree. But... You get to pick what's going to become indestructible. They, they don't get to know in advance. Um, this is also kind of a weird wrath for some creatures. Uh, so this kills bow, oh, even if you don't pay the destroy all creatures. Because if you 
make all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn, it loses the ability that sets the power and toughness to be equal to the number of lands you control. Oh, so it just becomes zero, zero. It becomes zero. a zero, zero. Yep. Horrible. Yeah. Uh, the, it, it, going into a showdown with a giant ox apparently is not good for that ox's health. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's fair. It's also an instant speed wrath. You're um, not thinking about the health of your ox often enough. Yeah, it's true. It, it's true. Uh, the, like, go consult with Bruce Tarl. He's... He, he he's used, taking very good care of ox. Yeah, he he has the first time a magic card is the plural of ox oxen on oh, a card. Oh bad! And he, he's doing set. so well taking care of them. They have double strike. Yep. And the ox in this set uh, and cows or whatever they're all they seem to be mystical. They seem to have powers. Yeah. Like holy cow is mm -hmm. is you know flying angelic cow. And well, then that one is an angel cow. So. Angel cow. Yeah. Bovine intervention. Yep. Like that one it has some kind of godlike ability. I really love the idea that the lore of these cows and oxen on Thunder Junction are weird gods and they just <laughs> choose to just yeah. be be subverted for the fun of it. Well, no, that's very funny. Like if I was the if I was like the deity of cows, I would be in favor of humans uh, choosing cows as their preferred uh, meat animal because they're the the biggest number of things on earth is cows, right? The largest number of mammals by by both volume and like number of that animal, right? I I mean, I don't know. I thought it was going to be some kind of bug, but then you said mammals. You know. Wait. Uh largest number of mammals. Yeah, what what, by what type of mammal? Species. Yeah. What is the no, most okay. it's, it's, No, it's rodents and bats. Okay. But by volume, it's got to be by cows. volume. <laughs> Largest number number of mammals by species by <laughs> volume. volume. Oh my god! No, no, I'm really, really sorry. It's still next three are the primates, bats. and then the even toed ungulates, including pigs, camels, and whales. All right. Okay. But yeah. They, what they, other like things do you measure lot, by there volume? Are a lot more, there are a lot more cows than there would be if we didn't eat. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Oh, that's yeah. a, that's a that's point. A, that's my point. Is that like you get more cows as a result of humans liking to eat cows? But at what cost, Rob? What cost? Uh, what cost? Every, it, everything has to end, including draft <laughs> boosters. Wow, do you all want to hear a hor do you all want to hear some horrible facts? I mean, we've already heard some on Bunch the show of already. Coming at you, humans, most populous mammals on Earth. Humans, eight billion. Rats, yeah. seven billion. That, there's a rat. There's almost a rat per person. <laughs> yeah, you ever, everyone you, gets you, their own yeah, rat. Get, get us a signed rat. Next one's cute. Sheep, one point one eight billion. Uh, and then four is cows, one billion. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 got it. So, Anyways. I had my facts a little bit wrong. I'm That's sorry. Okay. I, I just talked about, because I know there's a humongous amount of cows. Yes, there are a huge number of cows. Um, All right, so back to cards. Anyway, back Jace to Jace, back. talking about cows. Uh, blue, blue, for, uh, for a legendary planeswalker, Jace, with three loyalty. Jace says, you can't cast the spell during your first, second, or third turns of the game. That is your first, second, or third turns. If it's another player's turn, that's not your turn. So if you can somehow cast this Jace on somebody else's first, second, or third turn, Jace don't care. Nice. You did no. it. Jace don't care. Uh, he has plus one draw a card, then discard a card. Plus one, you may exile a non-land card with mana value three or less from your hand. If you do, it becomes plotted with all the things we've talked about for plot. And remember, split cards count both halves of the split card. Yeah. So like that, uh, what is it? Hustle and bustle? Yeah. Hustle and bustle costs like seven. Yeah. You can't, you can't send this away with Jace. And minus six until end of turn. Whenever you cast a spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Pretty cool off plotted cards. Nice. You could yeah. you could send a bunch of things to plot and then uh, have Jace resolve all your plot threads at once, like a, a like a fantasy author. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Oko, the ringleader. Oko is blue green two uh, for a legendary planeswalker. Oko for three loyalty. At the beginning of combat on your turn. Oko the ringleader becomes a copy of up to one target creature you control until end of turn, except he has hexproof. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Plus one, draw two cards. If you've committed a crime this turn, discard a card. Otherwise, discard two cards. Oko says crime pays. M minus one to make a 3-3 three, three green elk creature token, and minus five. For each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. Uh, so, yeah, Oko duplicates your whole team. But the big nice. deal with Oko is Oko does a thing that Sarkin does. And now he's Gideon. Gideon and Sarkin both do this, which is they turn into creatures. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Oko stops being a planeswalker when he copies a creature, which means that burn spells won't reduce his loyalty or any other thing. If you attack with this Oko, it has the normal combat effects from being a creature. It doesn't lose loyalty as a result. 
uh, the other thing is that if you go to combat with Oko, um, Oko becomes a copy until end of turn. You really should have activated Oko pre-combat. Um, because, because he loses can't. his abilities. Um. Yeah. So the plus one ability that if you, if you don't plan to do anything else, probably just plus one Oko. Um, and then turn it into a copy of a thing. Uh, it's just nice. And it's just nice. It's just nice. Um, and it does, he does target your creature so they know what you're going to turn into a copy of. If they kill the creature in response, that ability doesn't resolve. Oko doesn't turn into a copy of anything. So Oko might get hosed by the fact that the game has actual interaction points. <laughs> a lot of people want to hose down Oko. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong. Maybe maybe more would want to hose Oko if he mounted a giant beaver. <laughs> but the timing doesn't work out. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's impossible. Yeah, well, I mean, post combat, if you don't attack with Oko, if you just make Oko into a copy of a giant beaver, then <laughs> so what? He's just going to recreationally mount a giant beaver. <laughs> well, he's going to turn into a giant beaver and then mount the giant beaver and let the giant beaver mount him. <laughs> Good. Good. Everyone, I, lo good. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Vraska, the Silencer. Uh, Vraska is green, black, one for a 3 3 legendary creature, Gorgon Assassin. She has Death Touch, and whenever a non token creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay one mana. If you do, return that creature card to the battlefield tapped under your control. It's a treasure artifact with tap, sacrifices artifact, add one mana of any color, and it loses all other card types. It does not lose abilities. Uh, so you get a treasure. It has whatever the abilities of the creature that the opponent controlled. Weird. Had. Yeah, it's super cool. She like turns them into a, like a gold bauble that she can then use for their abilities. Um, also, this is like this is stuff that applies on top of the creature. If you copy the creature, so if you clone that treasure creature, well, you get the base object. If you have something that copies an artifact, you can copy it and you get the base thing. It doesn't have all the treasure effects on it. Uh, it's just super weird and cool. That's what I got. Wow. Wow. Thank you. There is, this set seems very complicated. It's got a lot of stuff going on. A lot going of on. words on these cards. Well, it's, it's three sets in one. Yeah. Right? That's a good point. That's, that's kind of how I viewed it when I was going through it. I was like, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, but it is many cards and many, many, many cards. complicated cards. Yep. Very excited to uh, play this this weekend at the pre-release yeah. and check it out and oh. see how it plays. It's time to name cutest and grossest card, everybody. Um, there is so many cute cards in this set. There really are. I mean, it's unbelievable. There are so many cute cards in this set. I think every set. time I say this, I say there are more cute cards in this set than there have been. I think I said that last set. Bloomboro is going to absolutely destroy yeah, me. It's yep. going to be the high watermark. I'll just like go through every card and name it, um, which I could definitely do for for this set. There's there's like one, two, three, four. There's like 10 of them on my list. Um, I don't even quite know how to choose because there's so many. Uh, I'm just happy that there's so many cute cards. So yeah. good job, Wizards yeah. of the Coast, with your art direction on this set. Um, my goodness. Uh, the pr Prairie Dog is very, very cute. You yep. pulled that up, Rob. A plus. Rambling possum. Adorable. Oh, this possum. He's wearing a hat. He's also like 10 feet tall. He's enormous. He's a very big, cute possum. Um, there's Dance of the Tumbleweeds, which I also oh. like, because it's got like arms and legs coming out of this tumbleweed. Why is it very it, cute? Why doesn't this make a brushwag token? Oh, I don't know. There is a brushwag in this set. So. Is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Tiny Bones is very cute. Yep. You all know how I feel about Tiny Bones. Husbando. Um, he's tiny. He goes where his bones will take him. Uh, Megan, I feel like you would love the card Fleeting Reflection, which is like a hedgehog situation. Yes, I love me a hedgehog. Looking at himself. Or maybe he is also a tumbleweed creature. Maybe he is a tumbleweed. Um, that's cards adorable. Uh, Rise of the Varmints is something that I is mm. is uh, agreeable to me because I love varmints <sighs> and these remind me of gremlins. And there's a bunch of them rising up and attacking. Very yeah. cute action, uh, unless it's being done against you, I suppose. <laughs> uh, there's an armadillo which is in this set, yes. which is very cute. Armored uh, armadillo. Spinewoods armadillo. He also looks oh. very big. Oh, there's He's armored seven, armadillo seven. as well. Oh yeah, that, yes, and armored armadillos. Yeah. Two different armadillos. Both of them very cute. Good gravy. I I, I could go on, but I'm just going to stop myself. Um, because I could just go on all day. You've mentioned Bucolic Ranch. Yeah, I just... Oh, they're all happy. Bucolic Ranch, yeah. Everybody's happy, including the dinosaur, which I don't know if I put a dinosaur yeah. in the same paddock with horses but you know, and cows, but, you know... He happy. What could happen? They're all going to have a nice time. I thought Lone Shark was very cute. He had Lone a cute shark, shark face. Cute. Yes. So how can I choose? Um, 
I just have to go with the card that gave me the most beautiful reaction from seeing it on first sight, which doesn't always happen with a rare. Mm. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, very few cute rares. Very few, but Roxanne Starfall Savant wow. is going to take the cake here. I think she's too human. <laughs> I that's think that Roxanne take. is not the reason that she picked it. I think she picked it for the it's chicken. It's for the chicken. Okay, oh, that's fair. That's fair. This chicken is like the cutest. <laughs> yeah. This the chicken. chicken is really cute. That chicken's yeah. like, oh, all right. Here I am. If, like, if that chicken were a car, it'd be that chicken. Oh, yeah. It would be that okay, chicken. Okay, that's fair. I'm what into, they yeah. took from us. <laughs> Where's the chicken? I need to know if this chicken card existed at some point. I've got to think it did. Well, th yeah. I, I'm sure that they actually probably had more... Um, more cards, either in this set or in Big Score. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's that'd true. be my guess. Squish them. Oh. Um, so I miss you, Chicken. And we miss you. You're we getting a you. cutest card nod through the form of Roxanne, yeah. who is also a cat. So she's cute. But she is pretty human. Um, but that chicken, I love that chicken. I will happily say, not too many gross cards in this set. Great. Um, but runner-up, uh, Geralt, the flesh right, don't like what he's doing. Looks yeah. terrible. I'm grossed out by him what he's doing and the thing he's working on all around <laughs> bad vibes. Yeah. Geralt and I'm, we're calling you out for it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. But of course, if there is a giant millipede, it's going to be the giant millipede and there's a giant millipede. It's called ambush gigapede. What's worse than a giant millipede? One that surprised you. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why it, would you let it surprise? But the answer is because they always surprise you yep. because you're just living your freaking life. And the next thing you know, the worst thing you've ever seen is scurrying across the floor. That's all I have to say about yeah. that. Terrible time. I was looking in Zero Scryful. out of five stars. I was <laughs> trying to find it and I, I typed, I was trying to type it in and I stopped midway and it said, did you mean ambush midlife? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It's trying. I'm, I'm trying. trying. I'm trying to ambush midlife, okay? Yeah. Stop judging me. Great choice. I hate millipedes as well. Ugh. Disgusting. Well, every means, thank you so much for <laughs> watching this episode or yep. listening to this episode. It's a good luck high five. Whether you're Pinto, Black, uh, Lima, uh, we accept all beans here Kidney. on this show. Kidney? Yeah, you're accepted. Yeah, that's right. Every kind of bean. Baked? <laughs> I like a baked bean, you know? I, I love a baked, baked bean. beans often enough. Oh my gosh. I think about them too much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How much is too much? I don't know. But whenever I see, you know, I'm like, right. well, baked beans would be good with this dinner. Yeah. And then I'm always just giving the side eye. <laughs> like, there goes Maria thinking about those beans again. <laughs> thinking about those beans again. <laughs> Well, thank you so much to everyone who makes this episode possible. Once again, to all of our patrons, uh, thank you so, so much for making everything that we do um, available to everyone, whether they're able to send us a few bucks at the time or not. Uh, Absolutely. We're so, we're so happy to make it available to everybody. Um, and remember, you make that, po you literally make that possible. It's so, so. true. Patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Please consider becoming a patron before the next episode. We'd love to have you. And there's great perks. Uh, thank you to Card Kingdom for being an amazing sponsor. Thank you to Judge Rob for always giving us all of his knowledge out of his mouth like a down dolphin fountain in the yes. middle of your yard. Yes. For all of our producers, Rob is staying on to tell us some stories oh, yeah. from his magical career that has been requested by the producers. Very exciting. I tell you, Rob's story time is... Rob's got some <laughs> wild stories. <laughs> is the a lot of them like are about lot. how he almost died. Yeah. <laughs> his stories are, are really great. So if you're a producer, you are in for a treat, no doubt, coming up here. Everybody else, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. <laughs>